Hi, I'm Sean Bartlett. I'm going to talk about the music industry and what I consider to be the now, the way things are done now, or what could be the future of the music scene because things have changed over the years. The old way, or considered the dinosaur way of the music industry was something like this. Uh, the singer or the band could cut a demo and he would record it, you know, either himself and of course the equipment was very primitive. You would use like a two-track uh, machine and a simple microphone that didn't have really a, a low or high end of response where he could control it. And then he would be very ex inexperienced about recording it. And uh, that was one way he could cut his demo. Another way he could um, record it in a music studio. He could rent it out a studio. Of course, this was very expensive. Uh, anybody knows even now to rent uh, a studio, it's very expensive. And he was also at the mercy of the studio and how they recorded it. And once the demo was cut, uh, he would give it to he could give it to a uh, local radio station, uh, or he could give it to a major recording label, and they could listen to it and find out. And, you know, if they if, if he was worthy of their uh, market. The bottom line, you are dependent to some third party just to get your music to the people who want to listen to it. Well, things eventually changed in the music industry. There's a new way. Basically, video killed the radio star. Audio demos and radio were not the only way to find about artists. Although television was a common media for uh, pop stars, MTV uh, was aiming for people who liked music. So there were people who used to listen to the radio 24-7 because they liked music. Now they were list watching and listening to MTV 24-7 to listen to music. People had to buy albums at stores still at the time. You were still limited to um, having to go to a music store. Not many retail stores at that time were selling music, so you had to go to a music store to buy music. Uh, bootlegging and piracy was expensive and risky, and it was usually limited to expensive audio duplicators, and selling it, you know, at flea markets and street vendors. Uh, I have actually had bought a bootleg copy when I was a kid. Did not know it was. They did everything in the world to try to prevent you knowing that it was a bootleg or piracy copy at the time. And of course, when you're a kid, you don't know the difference between the two. Eventually, things started to change again in the industry with the invention of computers and other medium outlets, uh, the modem brought in the internet and then later on people were able to share files, very small files, over the internet. But since the invention of recording, people record albums and radio airplay of songs through their tape players but never were as good as the original. Basically, you would record it but the copy would never match the original. I remember people calling on the radio saying, could you play this certain song so I could record it. The radio would go ahead and play the song, people would take their tape recorder, put it against the speakers, and that was the way people would record the music a lot of times because that was the only way they could do it. Uh, Napster was one of the ways people find out about music. It was a curse to established artists, but a blessing to new artists. Uh, then later on there would be MySpace, Facebook and YouTube, and now Twitter would follow.